Yeah. I mean, most, mostly what I want to express is gratitude. And I would not be here but for a whole lot of people. Um, and my co-counsel are amazing. I have the best plaintiffs on the planet. And I really want to recognize all of the staff at our Children's Trust and our supporters. Unless you have the privilege of being on this team, you have no idea <laughs> what we do and the, the crazy extent to which my staff works day and night to support these young people. <laughs> and we couldn't do it without all of you. We're also, we're standing on the movements that were built during the civil rights era, during the right the right to women for women to vote we're standing on movements for gay rights we are standing and growing this effort on the climate movement that's been around for a long time now and we need to continue and grow and i guess one ask i have for people out there and it's something i mentioned in my argument today is that it's really hard to sit with the devastation of climate change but if we can't sit with it and feel it on a deep level and then have vision and hope for the world we want to create and set that intention, we won't solve the problem. So if more of you can spread the word and encourage your family and your communities and your friends to go to that place and feel what we are losing and then set an intention for what you wanna create, what you can do in your personal life, but also to start spreading the message that this is about constitutional fundamental rights we need that message to spread far and wide. And what we're doing here today, we are standing in solidarity with the people at Standing Rock who are on the front lines, stopping the infra infrastructure, holding the line. We're standing in solidarity with the drowning island nations and people who are losing their lands, people in Alaska whose villages will have to move. We're standing in solidarity with indigenous people around the world who have known for far longer than we have what we're doing to our planet. Woo. And we're standing in solidarity with children everywhere because what we're doing is not just helping young people sue the United States, who is the country with the most responsibility for this problem, but we are helping children in Canada and Australia and France and Norway and the Philippines and Pakistan and India and Bangladesh and countries all over the world to do exactly what we're doing right here. And we have partner attorneys. We're working with attorneys across the United States to hold state governments accountable for the benefit of youth. And we need your support because it is a lot of work and we have a lot more to do. And right now, I feel amazingly hopeful and grateful for this court in Eugene, Oregon. And so, in case you haven't noticed, it's really hot up here. And it's getting hotter by the day, literally. And so I think I'll, I'll close and just tons of gratitude for everybody who came and showed up. It matters. It's what democracy looks like. Thank you. I guess the question, if Judge Aiken rules in the affirmative, uh, for you within the next 60 days, then what is the next step after that? Would, would her action put into motion all these changes, or would there be follow-up action from your committee? So when we get that green light, we are moving full steam ahead. We're open to settlement discussions with the federal defendants if they're willing to come to the table, as long as it doesn't delay a resolution of the case. We've already been developing our evidence in the case. We've been working hard on that all summer. We'll begin doing discovery seeking documents and evidence from the federal government and from the fossil fuel industry interveners about their role in this problem and what the solutions are. And so we will move full steam ahead. We'll have a status conference. We'll set a trial date and we'll be off and running. Is the trial, would it be here in this courthouse in front of, Aunt, of Judge Aiken? Can you repeat the question? She wanted to know if there is a trial, will it be in this courthouse and will it be in front of Judge Aiken? And the trial will take place in this federal courthouse. It's unclear whether Judge Coffin or Judge Aiken would oversee the trial. They may um, work together to move the case forward, and how they decide to divide it up, we're not sure yet. Can you briefly explain what happened in there? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, what happened in there, so the parties for the plaintiffs and the federal defendants and the intervener defendants who are the fossil fuel industry, we presented arguments on the defendant's attempt to get the case dismissed. They want it kicked out, we want to keep it. And so it was really about whether Judge Coffin's decision recommending that the court keep the case and deny the motions to dismiss, whether that should be affirmed by Judge Aiken. And um, I, my co-counsel would like me to point out a couple of charts. So central to my argument was showing that the federal defendants are truly responsible for causing the harm we're seeing with climate. Um, they're responsible for a good chunk of the carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere and that they've known of this danger since you can see the mid 1950s and I know it was shocking for me when I first discovered this that they've known about this problem before I was even born and the information has gotten you know more solid and more convincing over time but they've had so much opportunity to deal with this and they haven't and instead they have kept a fossil fuel energy system in place that benefits the fossil fuel industry and not the people. And you can see, I just want to be really clear because there's a lot of misconception out there about what the Clean Power Plan does. This is what the Clean Power Plan does. It flatlines our emissions at high dangerous levels. It does not do what the administration asserts that it does. And this is from the Department of Energy. Okay, so it is the Clean Power Plan is a baby, baby step to get rid of a little bit of coal, but it is not nearly enough. And so that was a lot of what the argument was about today. And when I, I interviewed James Hansen, he said Congress hadn't done enough so far, and that's why the president is frustrated. Do you see the role of the district court, um, you know, having a lot of power, even though the government attorneys were saying <coughs> essentially don't mess with the higher branches? They are in higher. <laughs> <laughs> they aren't higher. They aren't higher. They yeah. aren't higher branches. So yeah, all three branches of government are they're equal in our system of government. And and so here here's what the truth is. Congress for decades has enacted all kinds of laws that give the executive branch of government full authority to deal with this problem. They have all the authority they need in existing legislation. Okay, that's one thing. It's true that Congress would have to put a price on carbon through a carbon tax. That would be a legislative response. But you know how that happens? The executive branch needs to ask for it, right? They need to ask for it. But even without a carbon tax, which would be the sanest, fastest way to deal with this problem, as many people say, the executive branch has lots of tools and they can start by stopping leasing our lands for fossil fuel extraction. They can stop approving permits for new pipelines and new infrastructure that supports the fossil fuel industry. And they can divert federal support away from fossil fuels and towards clean energy. I think we had a question over here. I don't see her now. If you want to know of a website where people where donate money? Oh, yeah, yeah. People want to give you money. You can go to ourchildrenstrust.org and click on our donate page and, and help support these young people and other young people who are plaintiffs in cases around the world. From your point of view, what are the greatest barriers to success in this case? Who's standing in your way? That's a good one. Right now, who's standing in our way? I would say the Department of Justice is standing in our way. I, I think what the, what the court indicated today is she questioned them about, why are you fighting this so hard? If what President Obama says is true, that they see that this is a terrifying emergency. And if he believes that he wants to do something about it, he can sit down in a room with these plaintiffs and talk about a settlement of the case that would put the nation on the right trajectory away from fossil fuels and towards clean energy. Woo. Woo. Thank you. Thank you.